Hey guys, welcome back to Black Rose TV NG. If this is your first time here, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you. I am Rukaya Muhammad Salisu, and it would mean a lot to me if you would click on the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified when a new video is being uploaded. This is episode 2 of Mental Health and we're still on the constituents of pain. Remember, corrections and suggestions are always welcome in the comment section. We'll be moving on to the third constituent of pain, and that is heartbreak. Having a heartbreak is not easy. We all have gone through heartbreak in one way or the other. Heartbreak is just like losing someone, as I mentioned in my previous video. Heartbreak doesn't necessarily have to do with love relationship. It could come in any form of relationship, for example, between parents and children, or between siblings, friends, or even your co-workers. If a person breaks your heart, forgive them first, because the more you hold on to a grudge, the more it hurts you. Also, do not question yourself why things didn't go the way you wanted. You will just end up in pain. Learn to forgive yourself. Liberate yourself and move on with your life. Pick up those broken pieces and move forward. And know that it is okay to give yourself time to heal. Just don't end up holding on to it to a point where it affects you negatively. Moving on to tension, stress, and lack of flexibility. Every person has tensions due to different things. It could be financial, family, or even career. Or even when you're being compared to others based on looks, grades, lifestyle, success, and whatnot. You become competitive, making you worry and stressing over it. Everyone has their own talent. Recognize and work on it. Never compare yourself to anyone because you are the only version of you. Doing that only leaves you doubting and degrading yourself. You hold back on your capabilities. You limit yourself and restrict yourself from exploring the depths of your competence. Pain, no matter physical or emotional, needs to be felt. If you want to overcome it, you have to be strong and tell yourself that you can go through it and defeat it with the help of God. Do not let your emotions take control over you. This brings us to the next aspect which is the second part of mental health. And it is also a way of expressing pain. That is crying. Crying is how your heart speaks when your lips can't explain the pain you feel. Crying isn't bad. It doesn't make you, it doesn't make a person weak. We all go through good and bad times in our lives. Ever wonder that some people show themselves as super strong when they tell you they can never, that, that they can't cry or they never cry because they can't feel pain. And most people have this image that if they cry in front of someone, they will be considered weak. Crying doesn't make a person appear weak or emotional. Some emotions are too strong to handle, and they affect each person differently, and each person handles emotions differently. Crying in front of somebody is indeed a courageous thing to do. Because you reveal your true self, you have removed the mask and let out yourself. So when a person is brave enough to cry in front of you, Never make them feel uncomfortable about it because you're lucky that they have trusted you enough to do so and help them in whatever way you can. To all the sensitive people out there, there is nothing wrong about showing your emotions. One thing you should have in mind is don't go around throwing a pity party. Let only those you trust in. Crying is good for the body and mind as well. It helps you in letting go the bottled emotions and soothes your mind. It relieves stress and pain, enhances your mood, and also helps you sleep better. It helps you get support from others. So next time you want to hold back those tears, you might want to think twice and let them flow. If you don't get emotional support from somebody, you can somehow relieve yourself some bottled, emo some bottled emotions. Failure to do so may cause one mental problem, and we do not want that to happen. Moving to another essential part of our mental health, and it's none other than the heart and mind. The heart and mind are two vital things that the body cannot do without. However, there seems to be an unending fight between the two. Which should have the final say or which, should, which of the two should win over the other, thereby affecting our decisions? It could be crucial or irrelevant. In whatever case the decision might fall under, the argument always goes on between our heart and mind 
leaving us confused. You see, the mind is complex, always on guard, innovating ideas and most times mysterious, while the heart is intuitive, master of, of the unexpected and fearless. You never know what it wants and when. The heart is promiscuous. The mind deals with thoughts and the heart deals, deals with emotions. There's always contrast between the two bodies. In the mind, there are things worth living for, and in the heart are things worth sacrificing and dying for. Because it's fearless, the mind calculates and analyzes situations, actions to be taken, plus what the outcome might be. If you want something you can't have, the mind automatically knows. But with the heart, it takes time to accept. It's easier to make up your mind than to convince your heart. When you act with your mind, people take you to be insensitive, calculative, or even cold. Yet, you're just being rational, logical, and reasonable. The mind is great at solving puzzles, forming strategies, but is it reliable or considerate when it comes to real-life situations? Is it? When you act with your heart, you let your emotions be shown. The heart prioritizes emotions where consequences are sacrificed. If only the heart is required to make decisions in life, there will be no room for different experiences and lessons in life. Likewise, if only the mind is enough to make decisions, feelings and emotions will be forsaken. In whatever situation we find ourselves, we need the two to move forward in life. As the saying goes, follow your heart but carry your brain along. Balancing between the two is an upstream battle. Most decisions need both to tune in the same frequency. So when the mind makes decision, it should in inspire the heart to be involved. That brings us to our question of the day. In what situations do you believe the heart should win over the mind? I will wait for your answers in the comment section. I'll be stopping here for today. And remember, corrections and suggestions are always welcome. Do drop them in the comment section. Like, subscribe if you not if you have not yet subscribed, ring the notification bell, don't forget that, and share this video. Thank you so much for watching. Meet you in the next episode.